Earlier this year, I did a 15 minute timed animation in After Effects every day for a month. I uploaded all the real time workflows here with a summary of the rules at the start, but briefly, here's how it works. A random theme generator picks a theme. You set a timer for 15 minutes. All imagery or footage has to be sourced in that time. When the timer ends, you have to render whatever you have. We'll look at the results shortly. Most are not great, but I'm going to argue that it's relevant how good the animation is. It's about the routine of doing it. What's more, I think you should give it a try, no matter how skilled you are in After Effects. Hi, I'm Adam Bennett. This is the Video Shop. Can deliberately putting yourself under time pressure be beneficial? What possible good can it do to stress yourself out, not enjoying the experience, and often end up with something that looks not great? Question. Question. Do you want to get quicker in After Effects? Another question. Question. Do you want to be a more confident motion designer? If so, stay tuned. I always do timed exercises for students. They generally hate it. Of course they do. It's stressful and anxiety inducing. But I do them because I think it helps make them quicker and more confident. When I first went freelance, I was paranoid that I'd walk into an agency and not be fast or good enough. I'm a cotton-headed ninny muggins. <laughs> it took me a while to get over that fear. So when I first heard about Ryan Plummer's 15-minute MoGraph challenge, I thought here's a chance to show students that I can put my money where my mouth is. And at the very least, they can enjoy watching me fail miserably. The theme on the first day was stars, and this was the result. Here's what went wrong. I got stuck trying to reuse a random colour expression from an old project, but it wasn't one that I knew very well, and I realised too late that I couldn't get it to work. And I probably didn't need it anyway. I should have just created eight different coloured stars and then duplicated them. I noticed I've developed a bad habit lately of creating elaborate expression rigs, which sometimes take longer to create than the problem they're meant to solve. Stick with what you know. There's no time to learn on the job when you're under time pressure. I knew that if I got at least a 3D camera move on the stars, there'd be some animation, but I wanted there to be text as well. The second thing I learned was, get some text in the scene. Even if you don't use it, you've got it there as a backup. So after this, with every animation, the first thing I did was create a text layer with the theme. An important part of motion design is communication, whether it's a narrative or an idea, or in this case, the theme, which could be a single word. Your main goal, even more so than the design or the animation, is to communicate that theme to the viewer, otherwise you failed. Here I was thinking of how the alien titles animate on. Mildly interested in motion design facts would sidebar. One of the first early examples of motion graphics was an influence on the title animation for Alien. There was no time to finesse the animation. That's another thing you lose with timed animations. I wanted to animate a shooting star, but ran out of time. Ran out of time. You'll hear that phrase quite a bit in this video. But the image is pretty striking. If you compare it to one of the more laughable efforts, it shows how important the design is. And therefore, even when you have just 15 minutes, allowing time for research is important. For the sake of this tutorial, let's equate desperately scrambling around on Unsplash with research. By the way, if you're worried that I'm going to talk about every single bloody animation, don't worry, we'll skip over some. No reason why you should suffer the same way that I did when I was animating them. I'm not saying this is the most amazing integration of text and imagery you'll ever see, but little smile in the mind touches like this are always nice in design. So try to look for visual connections, even if they're basic. It helps engage the viewer and elevates it slightly above just slapping text on an image. Here it meant sacrificing time on the animation, but that's just part of time budgeting. How much do you allow for design and how much do you allow for the animation? I couldn't tell you where exactly, but somewhere I've seen some kind of Greek statue imagery with compositive text and some kind of glitch effect. Is there somewhere in my fractured decaying mess of a brain? We all know the maxim, garbage in equals garbage out. I won't sanctimoniously lecture you on how we should all go to museums, and that will feed into our work and make you a better motion designer, blah blah blah. Mostly because I spend a damn sight more time in the cinema than I do in museums. But I'm also conscious that it's good to have a varied range of references to draw from, as a quote unquote, creative. But collecting references is important. This can either be taking an interest in design and creativity outside of the Burrograph community, and letting that seep in subconsciously, or just keeping an online scrapbook of some kind. I did that for this animation. I'm always adding to folders with type, colours or designs I find interesting. Without going into a whole detail about originality and where the line is between inspiration and plagiarism, if you have something like this that you can draw from, it's going to be massively helpful when you're on a time pressure deadline and those questions of originality are furthermost from your mind. But all that reference is useless if you can't translate it to animation. So hone your skills. You need to be able to take the idea or image that's in your head and bring it to life in your comp window. At this point, some of you might be going, hold on, I'm a beginner. Didn't you say that beginners should also do this? Yep, I still stand by that, but you should be doing this in addition to learning and improving your skills. 
and be conscious that the less you know in After Effects, the more limited your ability to animate whatever you like. That doesn't mean that you still can't communicate to the viewer. You never stop learning. And once you've used After Effects for a while, you realise that there's almost always more than one way to magic something to life. That's one of the interesting things for me when I watch tutorials, seeing how other people approach the same problem in different ways. I have more to say on this, but I'll come back to it at the end, as I think it speaks to exactly why timed exercises are a good thing. Speaking of tutorials, you don't necessarily need to do the tutorial step by step for knowledge to seep in. It depends what it's tackling. I remember seeing a Photoshop tutorial on Instagram for something similar to this, but I didn't recreate it. I just watched it and thought, huh, that's kind of interesting, and then kept on doom scrolling. So what's the takeaway here? Endless doom scrolling is actually a good thing? Mm, no. Let's go with, you can skim watch tutorials. Even though this one is simple, I felt a lot better about the end result than I did say this one. Or this one. Or well, f hell, this one. So why is this one arguably better? I think because it communicates the theme. The design isn't going to win any DNA D pencils, but nothing is off. The colour scheme works, so the design for what it is works, and then the animation supports the idea. And broadly, these are three main things you want to consider when you create work. Idea plus design plus animation. What do you think is likely to happen when you only have 15 minutes to animate something? Here's a clue. And another one. I'm so confused. And another. Wait a minute. Hold the phone. I got it. Not really surprising this, but if you're rushing, you're far more likely to make mistakes. No point dwelling on this for timed exercises, but worth bearing in mind generally. Always check your work and don't rush that part of it. Oh man. I got cocky and thought I could create 3D dice, and then, well, I don't even know what I was going to do with them. I didn't have a plan. I'd done this on day 15, and I thought, dominoes, dice, what's the difference? So then I had to admit defeat, and slap an animator onto the text, and, well, yeah. You blow it! Be realistic. Design first, motion second. Prioritise your lockup. Have an idea in your head of what you're going to animate, and don't try and wing it. Or if you do, be better at it than I am. So the final day. I've got 30 days of experience under my belt. I've learned what to prioritise, made mistakes I won't repeat. I can handle time pressure better than someone disposing a bomb in every film where there's always a visible timer for the benefit of the audience. What did I come up with on day 31? Yeah, I'd love to show you a clear curve of improvement over the course of the month, so I can wrap this video up with a smug bow and promise you results. All I'm interested in is results. But this isn't that kind of video. You're going to have good days and bad days, and if you're me, the latter will probably outweigh the former. So that's it, a month 15 minute animations. So we wanted to know, will it make me quicker in After Effects? Will it make me a more confident motion designer? I've been animating for 20 years, so I'm not going to base my answer solely on this month of exercises, but I think yes to both these questions. As I said earlier, don't expect to be knocking out masterpieces. If you manage the odd animation you're happy with, then great. But I think it's best to think of this like yoga or running. It may not necessarily be fun in and of itself, but it's good for you and you feel better afterwards. Remember earlier when I said that we'd come back to this animation? Hone your skills. Well in this case, if you're familiar with displacement maps and fractal noise and layer modes, you'd be able to create this. But if not, you'd have to limit yourself to what you know how to do. That might sound obvious, but it goes back to the reason I do timed exercises with students. When I went freelance 10 years ago, I had this anxiety about going into an agency and not being fast or productive enough. My first jobs were through a recruitment agency, and they were often just advertised as After Effects operator, and I'd have no idea what I'd be asked to do when I sat down on one of their computers. No one wants to be thought of as shit, and most of us are battling imposter syndrome of some kind. I hope the hell you're making a point. I was paranoid I'd be asked to do something that I couldn't, and finally be exposed to the fraud and charlatan that I knew I was. I tried to prepare students to cope with that kind of situation and not feel the same anxiety. You should always be honest with clients about what you know how to do, and your skill set is down to what you choose to learn, hence hone your skills. You'll be more employable, but ability to deal with pressure is often put down to experience, but you can create that experience yourself with these exercises. I also wouldn't rush into it if you're very new to After Effects. Get comfortable with the basics first. I don't put students through this until a few weeks into the course. And don't feel like it needs to be 15 minutes. 
maybe try a bit longer and gradually reduce the time as you improve. But keeping it short is good for making this a regular exercise that doesn't take much out of your day. It might be something you do first thing in the morning before you start work. There's a theory about how kicking off the day by accomplishing a small task can make you productive for the rest of the day. You can read it here. Try not to be put off by the wince inducing articles on the site. I think there is something to this. And I can say anecdotally that I certainly felt better after having done this exercise first thing in the morning. I also think it's a good creative palate cleanser. If you're stuck in a rut in a project, it can potentially be a creative hard reboot. It forces you to focus entirely on something else for a little while and maybe help you get out of your own way. That's why you shouldn't worry too much about the end result. It's not about producing amazing looking work for your reel. You might think of it as free writing. Do it and then put it aside, forget about it. And lastly, as I said before, I think it's good practice for budgeting your time, learning to work more quickly and dealing with pressure when you push for time. Thanks for watching, see you again soon. I love that.